Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again for another DVD Blu-ray update, showing you guys all the stuff I've gotten over the last two weeks or so, so I could talk about them, tell you what I think about what I picked up. The first one is I got from Best Buy. Uh, they had a coupon which I talked to you guys about in a hoarding up video for five dollars off, so I ended up picking it up on the day it came out. It was like it came out Monday instead of a Tuesday. Titanic here on uh, Blu-ray, Blu-ray 3D, and stuff like that. And uh, the little thing I was going to say is that when me and my uh, friends at work were talking about this, because usually the date that this was uh, supposed to come out was September 11th, and we were, you know, me and my friends at work were talking about, like, why are they releasing a disaster movie, you know, on September 11th, you know? But then they ended up changing it to September 10th on a Monday, but uh, it's, this movie has always, always been one of my favorites. I always really liked it when it first came out. I remember uh, memories of me... Uh, getting out of school and going to the movie theater, seeing it multiple times and stuff. So I remember having to take a long bus ride home and, you know, going to go see it at this one weird theater in like uh, Cold, on Coldwater Canyon, I think. It's cold water or something like that. But Titanic looks absolutely beautiful on Blu-ray like you would expect. There are a couple of shots in here. Since it's now on Blu-ray, like uh, long shots of like the, the ship and stuff where, you know, it's all digital and stuff. You see people walking around. You can kind of tell that it's like, you know, computer people walking around just a little bit, you know what I mean? But there's also a bunch of special features on here. I watched the two new ones that came on here. Was it called? Uh, Titanic, The Final Words with James, James Cameron. Uh, it's one of those things where they um, talk about how the ship went down and why the ship went to the, you know, this far apart from each part. You know, like how the ship broke in two pieces and how one piece is way over here and the other piece is way over here and how there's junk over here. It's really, it's really interesting stuff that's on this Blu-ray. I really suggest checking this one out. That one's really cool. And next one up right here I got from Animago. And this is uh, really cool because I have this right here. It's really cool because when this when this came out um, I bought this. Uh, the Shogun Assassin Collection from Animago. And now Animago's uh, put out the Lone Wolf and Cub series. Which is the same, pretty much the same exact thing as this, but this is the extended versions, the uncut, unedited versions of the, of uh, Shogun Assassin. Same sort of thing. This is just an American version of it, because I don't, I haven't, I don't remember watching this version, but in the Shogun Assassin one, which I've always watched for years, is I always thought it was the guy and his son going out, you know, on the, ta you know, going out trying to find vengeance for the the people that killed his wife and stuff but in this it, I don't it's like I was watching it and I'm like wait a minute that kid's not really his son or something or either that or I just like missed like you know like maybe I missed it because it's all sub this one's subtitled that one's uh, dubbed in English but I might, I might have missed like a little story point or something but like the opening of this movie and everything's like totally different than the Shogun Assassin version you know what I mean like the opening of that's pretty much you know you know, if you have the ball, well, like, all this, I, sorry, I'm so excited because it was, it was cool because I always seen different editions of movies, you know, this is the uncut version, it's only like two minutes difference. This, you see the difference right at the beginning of this movie, you know, of the, of the first movie. If you guys love samurai movies, you will absolutely dig this. If you have the Shogun Assassin set, get this one. This one's going to be, this one will blow your mind to how different it, how different the stories are compared to that Shogun Assassin one, the Lone Wolf and Cub, the complete uh, series here. It's a, it's a six film set, and the uh, Shogun Assassin one is a five film set. So like you're getting a whole new movie in here. Comes on uh, two discs and everything. I don't know man, it just, it just really blew my mind how Animego put the set together. I thought it looks absolutely beautiful. And uh, I'm still, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm still watching through the set right now because I have a whole bunch of other stuff I'm watching and I have to work and everything, but I think I got up to the baby cart or whatever wherever that one is but it's it's absolutely a lot of fun guys I suggest checking out the Lone Wolf and Cub uh, collection right now from Animago uh, next up right here I got from uh, Fry's Electronics because they're, they're, they had the cheapest price for $14.99 the Piranha 3 Double D but this one uh, has the 3D version Blu-ray and DVD digital copy version on here I found this movie to be a lot of fun killer fit you know guy has a water park he ends up, you know, inheriting a water park from his wife or whatever that died. Something like that. He inherits it, then he turns it into, like, you know, a, a stripper place where people can go and take off their clothes and stuff. And then Piranha come in. That, that's, that's simple enough, but if you guys love, like, just cheesy movies like the, all the other Piranha movies, 
it's, it's cool. It's a fun. It's a fun cheese fest. You know what I mean? I really do dig this. I really enjoy John Gulliger's work. And of course, Patrick and Marcus, the guys that wrote it, the same guys that wrote the Feast movies, the Collector. And I think the same guys that are doing the collection. I think it's called the Collector 2, kind of whatever it's called. I think it's just called the Collect Collection. But it looks cool as hell. I can't wait to see Collector Part 2. That'd be awesome. But Piranha uh, the 3 Double D looks amazing on Blu ray. And uh, Gary Busey makes a cool appearance in there. And uh, of course, Lo uh, Christopher Lloyd and the Hoff, man. That's what I'm talking about. You know, playing himself as he's like, you know, running down to try to save somebody. You see his man boobs jiggling a little bit in slow motion. I thought that was funny. But uh, Piranha 3 Double D, you got to check this one out, guys. Uh, next one right here is from Magnolia. The Magic of Belle Isle, Morgan Freeman, it stars Morgan Freeman, and uh, Kenan Thompson's up in there also. And it's pretty much about a, a, a writer, played by Morgan Freeman, that writes westerns, you know, like, you know action western books. And he hasn't kind of done that in a while. And I, I, I kind of forget why, how he moves into the house that he's at, because I think, I, I don't know, I, I, I miss it somehow. But it's him moving into this little island, on this island, moving into this little house. You know, he's kind of like a grumpy old man, trying to, like, you know, figure out what he's going to do. He's, he's like, drink, he drinks a lot. He ends up striking a relationship up with the, uh, the lady and the kids across the, in the house across the way. It's just a really lovely, it's just a real, like, heartwarming movie. I, I, I was really, really involved watching this. I really loved the characters that were in this movie. Oh, and it's also directed by uh, Rob Reiner. You guys know uh, Rob Reiner. It's, it's just a really, it says on the box here, a re-coming of age story. It's pretty much about a guy that's all grumpy. And he just, you have to watch the movie and see what happens to him throughout the process of this movie, you know, the process of the movie. It was just really cool. I really, this is probably one of the ones that I highly recommend out of all the ones in the stack for this week. I really do love this movie, The Magic of Belle Isle. Alright guys, and the next two up here are from Twilight Time. And they both have a similar type of feel to it. They're both kind of the same kind of sort of movie. They both take place in the south. And it just, you know, kind of follows around the family. Pretty much the movie, the, both the movies are kind of in the same type of vibe and stuff. The first one is called The Sound and the Fury. I believe it was made, came out in 1954. Am I correct here? I'm sick of, sorry, 59. Woohoo! <laughs> came out back in 1959 starring Yul Brenner. You know him from uh, Gandhi and stuff like that. And uh, Jack Warden. You guys all know from uh, Problem Child. The Problem Child movies plays Grandpa in this movie. It's just uh, pretty much a family in the South, you know, just having fa family issues. This movie's more of a a character-driven uh, movie, you know, like about little the characters of, of a family. Like, there's not really a whole hell of a lot that's going on story-wise. It's more of like a character piece, like something that you would um, see as a play, sort of like the next movie I'm going to show. I'm going to show you too, because I think both of them like really. I know one. The next one I'm going to show you was is based on a play. But this one, it takes place in the South, and uh, I, I think a mother like runs out on this family. It just follows around like the progression of what this family's going through. Like one becomes a drunk, uh, one's kind of special, played by Jack Warden. He's kind of like a, uh, you know, real like special kind of not. If you guys ever seen the movie of Mice and Men or read the book of Mice and Men, it, it's Jack Warden's character is kind of like that in a way. Like he he's. He's light and special, but he has his moments, you know what I mean, where he can, you know, go kind of crazy. And there's this girl, uh, she's always like kind of like skipping school and stuff, and her father, played by Yoel Brenner, wants her to keep going to school, go, you know, this and that. And then she, she wants to like, you know, she kind of wants to run away with this one guy and stuff. It's just, it just follows around, the, you know, this family and what's going on and how the, the family unit is kind of just like all over the place since the mother ran out on them. Um, I found this to be really cool. Like, there's not really much I can say story-wise because I don't want to like ruin anything because there's not really much going on plot-wise. It's just really cool to follow the you know to see the different characters in this. You know what I mean? I love how the movie opens with uh, the maid and the maid's uh, kid waking up and you know going into the house to wake people up for you know for breakfast. And to find out that the young girl is is gone, and she's kind of like worrying about, oh my God, is she gonna come back before her father? W you know, the the father wakes up and sees that she's been out all night or gone, and uh, I just I just found it to be uh, a nice uh, 
character piece is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, the Sound and the Fury. It looks absolutely awesome on Blu-ray. And the next one right here is from Twilight Time again, and it's called Steel Magnolias. You guys all know this one, starring Sally Field, uh, you know, uh, Dolly Parton, and uh, Julia Roberts. It's, this is, like I said, this one's another one that takes place in the South, and it follows this family throughout this whole, like, I think it's a year, maybe a little bit longer than a year. It starts off with Julia Roberts' uh, it start, it, the movie opens up at Julia Roberts' wedding. It's wedding day. And it's just people trying to get ready for the wedding. People going to get their hair done to look good and for the wedding. The father's outside shooting at the trees to try to get the birds that are like all, it seem like they see all the birds seem like they're all migrated to the tree in front of their house that where the wedding's going to take place. So he's like out there shooting it, driving people in the, the t little city uh, crazy with it. And, you know, it just follows the progression from, you know, uh, Julia Roberts getting married. Uh, she can't have kids because there's some sort of something wrong with her system. In the movie, she walks, she goes to her mom, like because the the timeline's all kind of crazy. It kind of just moves and keeps going. It's kind of crazy, you know. Tells the mom, I'm I'm pregnant, and you know, but she has that thing like something, you know, you know, something bad is gonna happen because her body can't handle a baby. But you have to watch the movie to find out what happens and stuff like that. But I don't want to lie. Um, I think I might have seen this one a long time ago. But uh, I don't want to lie. The character, the the movie I was watching it, it was fine. It was whatever. I, I just didn't seem to get involved with the characters as much as I thought I was going to. But at the end of the movie, Sally Field's little speech that you, that she gives at the end, not speech, but like little monologue that she gives at the end, towards the end of the movie, really got me, and I started crying like a little girl and stuff. It was it's like, wait a minute, I didn't seem to care about what was going on. You know, like I was sitting here all by myself in the middle of the night watching Steel Magnolias crying like a little like a little girl. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, that, that's Steel Magnolias on Blu-ray. Steel Magnolias and uh, The Sound and the Fury are uh, both, put, both put out by Twilight Time. Ex they exclusively, you can get these titles at uh, ScreenArchives.com. This one and that one are limited to uh, 3,000. So if you guys want to check their titles out, they do really good uh, jobs on the prints and stuff. But uh, that's... Steel Magnolias on Blu-ray. All right, guys, this next one up right here, I picked up off of Amazon, uh, just because the price went down. And like, you know, it's one of those movies like I, I, I wanted to get when it came out, but I kept kind of passing on. I don't know why. I'm a fan of the first two, and I'm like, why wouldn't I have just gotten this? But I saw it on Amazon. It was like three or four bucks, and that is the a very, very Harold and Kumar Christmas. I found this movie to be pretty funny. You guys probably seen the movie. You probably already know the story. Uh, it's pretty much about uh, Harold and Kumar are trying to get a tree. You know, it's, yeah, it's pretty much them trying to go out and find a tree for Christmas because something happened to the tree they had before. You have to watch the movie to find out and you see the crazy antics. I really love the part where uh, the baby's getting all high and cracked out on crack and marijuana and stuff and it's like bouncing off the walls. It's just a really, really uh, funny movie. If you like the other Harold and Kumar movies, this one's will be right up your alley. Hey, very held in Kumar Christmas. You can get it really cheap on Amazon now. It's like, like four bucks, five bucks, something like that. Uh, next two up right here are from uh, Wellgo USA, and that is Zobogar, Karate Robo. Like power. Is, this movie is kind of like a mixture between Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Iron Man, mixed, you know, and throwing a little Godzilla in there. You know what I mean? Like that kind of cheese. Um, let me tell you the quick little ba little story of this movie. Little like quick synopsis. There's a guy that's a scientist. He has two kids. Uh, one of them dies at birth. And uh, he takes the kid's uh, DNA and, like, reconstructs it. You know, reconstructs it. Takes the DNA, puts it into a robot. So, like, it's like the robot has the soul and the DNA of the, you know, the brother. And the other brother is, like, a karate expert. So, uh, whenever he needs assistance on fighting crime or whatever... He calls his brother, Hey, Zabogar! Need you, Zabogar! Like, he has, like, his little helmet, and he, like, pulls it down, Zabogar! It's kind of just like Power Rangers and stuff. It's really crazy. When you see the bad, when the bad guy's introduced, it's kind of like you're, um, being transported up to, like, Lord Zed's lair and stuff. ba bom 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 And there's the bad guy sitting in his chair. Uh, and then it comes, it's, it's really crazy and wacky. The action's awesome. Like I said, it's a mixture between, uh, Godzilla, Iron Man, and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I found this to be a lot of fun. It is subtitled, 
But one of the, with movies like this from a sushi, a sushi Typhoon, the ones up here in the corner, it doesn't really matter because it just it just goes. The pace is awesome. It just goes and moves and moves. I found it to be awesome. I love this movie. Uh, next, though, is a movie I didn't like so much. I like that one, but this is also from Wargo USA, and it's called uh, Strippers vs. Werewolves. I really wanted to like this movie. Um, I didn't hate it, hate it. It was just kind of like, okay, you know? The, the Pretty much the story of this, of course, werewolves are fighting the strippers, as you can tell by the title of the movie. But uh, in this one, it starts off in the strip club, and this one girl is giving this one guy uh, a private dance and stuff, and in the middle of the private dance, the guy turns into a werewolf, and she goes, what's going on? And, like, you know, takes a pen that's made of silver out of her pocket and stabs the guy, in the, stabs the person in the eye. The guy dies, and then uh, the other werewolves find out that that werewolf died and wants to attack the strippers. That's pretty much the basis of the story on this one. But uh, Robert England is on here. That's the, one of the reasons why I wanted to check it out, that it says, you know, starring, starring Anne Robert England on the cover. And I'm like, this might be cool. But he's only in it for like a five minute scene. It seemed like um, the director or the people that made this movie, like Robert England happened to be at a convention in London or something. Could we give you like $500 if you come on down to the set for like an hour? And Robert England's probably like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, like it was one of those things like don't expect him to be in the whole movie. He was like a little five minute sequence. His sequence was amazing, but it was like... You know, not worthy of picking up the movie just because of that sequence. You know what I mean? Like, the makeup effects are kind of, like, I don't know, kind of, like, wacky. Like, I would rather watch uh, Teen Wolf. Like, Teen Wolf effects is kind of, you know, kind of weird. But, like, it's better than this. It's just kind of, like, hair just comes out the sides of their faces. Other than that, this movie is whatever. If you guys really love corny stuff and you collect everything Robert England, I guess you're going to have to get it. But, uh, it, it's Strippers vs. Werewolves wasn't that great. That's all I can say. I don't hate it, but I didn't love it either. All right, guys. Oh, whoa. Things are falling here. All right, guys. The next one right here is uh, Damsels in Distress uh, by Sony. And uh, I don't want to lie. I, I was watching it with my mom. And I kind of like started to, stall, started to fall asleep. Like it, it, didn't, it didn't hold my interest at all. You know what I mean? Like in one of those movies, it, it felt like a task to try to watch. Like I was sitting there going... <sighs> Oh, now here's my mom. She has a little bit. She has something else to say about this movie because uh, she actually watched the whole the whole thing. I, I kind of drifted off and fell asleep or whatever, but she actually watched it. So here, check out her review. Yes, I know. My son said um, he had, I uh, guess, a hard time watching this. So I took over and I thought, well, let me, you know, give it a chance. This movie is called Damsels in Distress. Uh, it's a Whit Stillman film. It stars Greta Gerwig and Adam Brody. Um, the majority of the cast in here I am not familiar with, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I'm way older than most of you watching. Um, it is billed as a, uh, let me see, offbeat comedy. Um, I have done comedy in theater, not in movies or anything, but I've done comedy and offbeat comedy in theater. And, um, it also says on here, uh, it's an utter delight. Well, I did sit through it, and I mean force myself to sit through it, because I'm used to comedies uh, being very fast-paced. That's what comedies are. Fast-paced. It has to move, move, move. Not like dramas where you can take your time. You know, comedy usually, as you'll notice in most of the movies you watch, you know, clips right along. It doesn't drag. And unfortunately, I found this particular piece of comedy to drag quite a bit. It's just a co another one of your, you know, college student movies uh, basically fo focusing on um, girls at college and the guys in the, you know, frat houses, that type of thing. It's a usual setup and which would usually you can get a lot of humor out of. However, this movie, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't see any humor in it whatsoever. But thank you for listening to me. Alright guys, there's my mom's review of the <laughs> Damsels in Distress. And the next one guys from Dokarama is Paradise Lost 3 Purgatory. It, uh, you guys all know Paradise Lost. It's, all, it's about the story of these three kids that were brutally murdered. And it follows the three people that were in it, you know, accused of those murders. But 
you never really know if they did it. But yeah, I'm not, I don't want to like say anything to ruin anything because if you, I want you to watch these other movies, there's like th three documentaries and it, ends, it ends here pretty much. But the thing is, like with documentaries, it's really hard to, to say much about it without ruining it because I, especially if, if I like it very much and I want people to see it, like I don't want to say something and then just going, oh, I watched all that for nothing. You know what I mean? Like it's about these 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 three young kids that have got murdered br brutally in this forest and these other kids get accused of it but they don't have there's no evidence anywhere saying that those are the those are the people that did it it's just a really really well done documentary it's from those filmmakers that made my brother's keeper and then right after brother's keeper they made uh the paradise lost i even um have the box set of paradise lost one and two right here and it's just a nice little companion piece to go alongside uh you know number three purgatory it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of hard to say what happens in it because I don't. If you haven't seen the other ones, I don't want to ruin it for you. But I want you to go check it out because it really got me involved in what was going on in this, in the whole, the whole cycle of this whole story that really did happen. You know how people were in jail for all the people are in jail for all this time for something you're not even sure if they did. You know what I mean? Like there's no evidence that these guys committed these murders, and just because one of these guys wears black and has black nail polish and black hair doesn't necessarily mean he's a you know a person that's gonna go out and kill little kids you know what I mean it's it's all kinda of crazy it's all like up to it, it all goes into your mind you're like who really did it and you never you have to really find out it, it's, you make up your own mind and see who really did do it Paradise Lost 3 Purgatory I believe it was nominated for some award, Academy Awards it says right here and uh, yeah there's some cool bonus features on here uh, deleted scenes, was it press day panel, like a discussion, and so interview with the filmmakers and stuff. It's really cool. I I really like the special features on this. The Paradise Lost series is one of those things that really uh, I really got involved in when I watched it. I really kind of got depressed when I uh, watched the first couple of them. Seeing crime scene footage of little kids that are like tied up on the on the floor. One of them got his penis removed, and it's just like crime scene footage. Like I do I really need to see that? I don't know, but it's just one of those things that you really get involved in watching when you check that out. And even when you check it out, you probably go online and try to do some research yourself of like what the hell is going on, you know? But Paradise Lost series, I really highly recommend you guys go check out. But uh, on to these next ones here, a little bit more light to talk about than murder, child murderers and stuff. But uh, the next one up, <laughs> it kind of, inver kind of uh, involves people trying to, you know, get little kids souls and stuff but it's nowhere near as dramatic and hardcore as uh, the Paradise Lost movies but that is Hocus Pocus on Blu-ray um, it's one of my favorite uh, Disney movies of all time or Brain of Vista whatever company it is Disney Brain of Vista whatever uh, about the Sanderson sisters they live in Salem and they get they get killed because they uh, they get killed by the town because they're like sucking the souls out of little kids so they can stay young forever <laughs> And it's just one of those really cool family flicks, if you guys haven't checked it out, starring Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and what's her name? Catherine and Jimmy, you know her from, like, Sister Act movies and stuff like that. And, uh, of course, uh, Thora Birch, you guys all know from, like, Now and Then, Monkey Trouble, all that cool stuff. Um, but Hocus Pocus, it, it's a two-disc set. It comes with the Blu-ray and DVD. There's no special features whatsoever on this thing, which kind of disappointed me. Alright guys, on to this next one that I bought at Best Buy. I had to get it because it was a Best Buy exclusive and I love Jack Black. But that is the School of Rock on Blu-ray. You guys all know Jack Black going in to this school as a, po you know, as a teacher, but he's not really a teacher. But he's teaching these kids music, but they're really supposed to learn something else. And, you know, him trying to get them on to go to this uh, tour. Not tour, but this contest so he can win some money so he can pay his rent. That's pretty much the basis of the story. But that in, in hilarity ensues from there. Of course, uh, what's her name's in there? Uh, Silver Silverman's in this movie. It's just really cool. I love this movie. Stood out to me when it first came out because the music. You know what I mean? Bam, 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 bam. Like at the end of the movie, the movie is over. The movie is over. You know, like the whole little thing with the kids. Like the kids in this movie were awesome and funny. But uh, that's School of Rock on Blu-ray. And guys, this next one right here is from MPI. It's the Moth Diaries. It's another one of those movies I kind of uh, struggled to get through. It was cool. It was kind of like a 
a weird vampire lesbian story. It was, it was just kind of, I don't know, it was one of those movies I was really trying to watch and I kind of like, you know, kept drifting in and out of it as I was watching it, you know what I mean? I don't know, that's The Moth Diaries. It's cool, it's put out by uh, IFC Films and MPI and stuff, but uh, it says right here, it was called Suspense and Erotic Tension. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's, it's kind of strange. It's, it's a it's a movie that I'm not really used to kind of watching. I don't, you know, lesbian vampire blah blah. You know, it, it's just really kind of wacky and out there. It wasn't my uh, kind of cup of tea. I I tried to I tried to sit there and go, is this oh, you know how sometimes you're watching a movie and it just kind of feels like, is it gonna be over yet? But uh, <laughs> that's the way it was, was. It felt like to me a little bit. It was cool. It was shot wonderfully. I love the music in it, but uh, the moth di uh, the moth diaries. It was okay. Uh, next up, right here, um, I have the other two of this, but I bought season one, two, and three of Hung at Best Buy because they were having the sale. You know, if you uh, spend fifty bucks or more, you get a ten dollar gift card. So I got Hung season one, two, and three. I got a ten dollar gift card, which uh, took ten bucks off of this. Uh, two broke girls on uh, Blu-ray, so I was just kind of going Blu-ray crazy at Best Buy and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, two broke girls. This is awesome, awesome show with Cat Dennings, and uh, I don't know. I thought it was. I, I think it's really funny about a rich, a former rich girl living with a poor girl, and working together in a little diner. I just think it's pretty funny. I've never seen the show on television, just on the Blu-ray here. I thought it was kind of funny, and uh, Hung, on the other hand, is about a guy pretty much whoring himself out for cash, you know? And it follows, it's Thomas, it stars Thomas Jane. You guys all know from The Mist and The Punisher and stuff like that. But uh, it's pretty cool, it's put out by HBO. I have all three se uh, three of the seasons now. And last up, but not least, is something I want to talk about that I picked up from my Blockbuster. Uh, it was, it's a form of rental, so I got it with, there was a sale recently at Blockbuster, everything was 50, all the used movies were 50% off. For like you know Memorial Day or something, and with co of course with my 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 discount it came up to seventy percent off, so it only came up to be uh, five dollars and twenty six cents, and that is Jay and Silent Bob get old, tea bagging in the UK. <laughs> you guys all know I'm a big uh, Kevin Smith, Jason Mewes fan. I even follow him follow him on Facebook, not you know Facebook, and uh, they have a YouTube channel where they post up like train wrecks and. Uh, little clippets of what they're doing and stuff. Even Jason Muse has like a show that he does occasionally where he talks about technology and how it's progressing and what kind of cool inventions you can get and buy or whatever. But that's uh, Jane Silent Bob good old teabagging in the UK. <laughs> it's okay. It's just uh, it, it, where, where they go on this thing again. They go to London, Manchester, and uh, Edinburgh. And it's just pretty much them doing their Jane Silent Bob good old podcast. There's just pretty much them sitting at their sitting at a desk talking stories back and forth to each other. So if you go out there and you think it's like a movie movie, it is not. It's just pretty much po like three different podcasts that they had that they happened to film in the UK. But uh, if you're fans of Kevin and Jason, uh, you'll like it. I did. But like, there's a couple people that rented it at my Blockbuster. Like that was stupid. What is that? You know. I'm like, it's Jane Silent Bob, sucker. What do you expect? Show some respect. But uh, yeah, guys, that's all I have to show you for your show today. And uh, yeah, thanks guys all so much for coming by. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye-bye.